Item number SCP-3387. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. All attempts at the closure of SCP-3387 have failed due to intervention from the Walt Disney Company. In exchange for cooperation in the containment of several other Disney-related anomalies, SCP-3387 is currently allowed to operate as normal. Foundation agents embedded in staff and security at Walt Disney are to identify individuals at risk of infection by SCP-3387 at the park entrance using facial recognition software to cross-reference travel records and are to deter such persons from accessing SCP-3387 through the discrete usage of amnestics and or physical detainment. Park guests determined to be infected with SCP-3387 are to be quarantined on site until they can be safely extracted by Foundation operatives. At no point is any member of the Foundation to enter SCP-3387 without the express approval of senior research staff. Description SCP-3387 is the designation for the attraction, It's a Small World, and the anomalous phenomena that occurs within the ride at Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom in Orlando, Florida. SCP-3387's anomalous effects manifest when an individual embarks on the ride while fitting the following criteria. 1. They have traveled to at least three countries outside their nation of birth. 2. They have committed a crime or a severe cultural indiscretion while visiting a foreign country. And 3. They have ridden the attraction at least three times prior. Once an individual meeting the requisite conditions has reached the second room of the attraction, they will begin to experience visual and auditory hallucinations. These include, but are not limited to, animatronics resembling people that they have met abroad, song lyrics referencing their name and life details directly, among others. As the ride continues, affected individuals will perceive the tempo of the song to increase and the hallucinations to become more specific, often focusing on personal traumas and misdeeds. Two minutes before the ride's conclusion, the lyrics change dramatically again, and it begins to be sung in an unknown language. Foundation linguists have failed to translate or record this vocalization properly, but test subjects have noted that it sounds like a deeply distorted version of Bavarian. After disembarking from the attraction, affected individuals will continue to hear the song intermittently, shifting in intensity at random intervals. And as the park closes, the song will increase in severity, compelling afflicted persons to break in and return to SCP-3387. Joint efforts by both the Walt Disney Company and the Foundation have been successful in detaining 82.2% of affected individuals before they can reach SCP-3387. Once an individual has reached the attraction, however, they will spasm violently before vomiting one to three small animatronics resembling themselves in the style of the ride. These simulacrums will animate and begin self-locomotion, singing the song of the attraction as they move inward to integrate with the scenery. Now, this process is painful and often results in fatal lacerations in the chest cavity and throat. Survivors show extremely adverse reactions to anything relating to the Walt Disney Company or its properties, 
even after psychological and amnestic treatment. It's currently believed that an unknown percentage of the animatronics throughout the ride were produced by SCP-3387. If an infected individual is apprehended before they are able to regain access to the attraction for birthing, they are to be subdued and taken to nearby Site-48 for invasive surgery. The animatronic fetus or fetuses, which gestate in the stomach, are to be removed and kept in standard biohazard holding. No object extracted this way has been viable following its forced removal from the host. Addendum SCP-3387 first came under Foundation scrutiny following a press release by the Walt Disney Company on June 7, 2002, that appeared anonymously on all televisions in the state of Florida. The statement was issued after several missing persons reports, all of whom were recent guests at the Magic Kingdom, though the subject of the disappearances is never mentioned. The speaker, a man of indeterminate age and ethnicity, in a gray suit with a Mickey Mouse pin on the lapel, matches no employment records of the Walt Disney Company, nor the citizenship of any known country. Efforts to identify and locate this individual are ongoing. And shortly after the conclusion of the broadcast, Foundation personnel were successful in disseminating Class A amnestics across the state. A transcript of the statement is below. We here at Disney truly strive to make our park the happiest place on Earth. Now that may seem like a monumental undertaking, but we know that if our staff and guests work together, we can truly create magic. We would like to remind our fans, visitors, investors, our family, that nothing is possible without cooperation. If you ever step into an attraction and see a part of yourself on display, that is by design. We put our hearts and souls into making every attraction a delight, and, and we expect our visitors to do the same. Let's all work together to make this world just a little bit smaller.